Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News, which is always myself. Five, I got my brother with me, Mr. Scott Tripp, aka the Crypto Beast. As you guys know by now, we like to take a couple minutes out of our day, kind of go through some of the headlines that we find in the crypto news, bring them to your attention, and see what you guys think about them. Uh, myself, I'm one of the uh, the admins over here, big one. Scott is also an admin and handles all the social media content. Um, and as we like to do every day, we like to kind of go over to the crypto beast, let him introduce himself, and then get his sentiment on the market as he uh you know goes through social media every day. Kind of look, kind of look at some of the things that he uh, sees online and and get a, a sentiment for the daily vibe. So let, let's see what crypto beast. We'll check in and see what he has today. I just find it interesting, like the media seems to be pushing buy, buy, buy. And me, I'm like sitting back here neutral, just watching everything kind of happen. The fighting in between like that 32 to 34 range right now, not breaking over 34, going to 35. And yeah, just watching it. Let's see what happens, I guess. Yeah, yeah, 44 and 45. Oh, yeah, 44 and 45. <laughs> yeah, 42, 40. I didn't want to correct you. I, I didn't want anybody. To, I didn't want anybody. To I'm tired. 42, 44K is the fighting range today. And then I'm waiting to see a break 45. Even I haven't seen it for a while now. I don't think it has beat 45 yet. So they were trying to say that it reached support today at 44K, but it fell below support really fast. <laughs> so I don't <laughs> know what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah, those are definitely the naysayers, but. Always interesting to see what's going on in the market. I think, you know, anytime you have these uh, couple of green days, you can only expect red days, right, uh, to follow soon. Uh, I think, you know, it's another opportunity to pull back, see if they can gather some more liquid, uh, liquidity and try to move up to the next level. But as you said, definitely going to be interesting to see and we'll watch it play out. Uh, but without further ado, we'll go right into our uh, first headline today. Uh, it's going to actually be coming from Cointelegraph. The headline reads, PayPal establishes advisory council for crypto and blockchain. Um, so a major U.S.-based uh, payment process, PayPal, has announced a team of industry experts to act as advisors on crypto, blockchain, and digital currencies. Um, so PayPal said the addition of the six members to its blockchain um, would help to support its current and future products, as well as its goal of creating a more inclusive digital financial ecosystem. So Fortress Eco, uh, For Fortress Investment Group CEO, uh, Peter Bridger, Georgetown Law University, uh, Professor Chris Bermer, Wiesman uh, Institute of Science, Professor Shafi Goldwasser, and the uh, Commodities Future and Trading Chairman, uh, Timothy Massad, MIT Sloan of Management Finance, <laughs> Professor Antoinette Shore, and MIT Digital Currency and Initiative Director, Neha Narula will be joining the PayPal initiative. Um, I didn't really actually mean to read their names, but uh, that's who got appointed. It. But they went on to say, we believe it, that uh, it is crucial to engage with the world's best leaders to uh, better understand the industry's most compelling opportunities and complex challenges, says Jose Fernandez, uh, which is the vice president and general manager for blockchain and digital cryptocurrencies for PayPal. So it looks like that they can go out there and just, you know, hire just anybody. Uh, these people have some in, uh, really some amazing backgrounds. I mean, you're talking about Fortress Investment Group. You're talking about Georgetown Georgetown Law Center professor. You have a Wiseman Institution of Science professor. You have a uh, somebody from the former commute, uh, uh, commodity future and trades chair, uh, and then somebody from MIT, uh, the Sloan School, and then somebody from MIT Digital Currency Initiative. So this is a uh, impressive uh, staff to be added on. Um, PayPal is doing so. Uh, I think PayPal is going to really try to take that step to make sure that the the um, the blockchains or I guess the bridges that they bring in and 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 the things that they're going to build to make payment a little bit easier. I think they're going to really try to take the steps to make it, uh, make themselves known again. Cause I feel like PayPal kind of fell out of that payment structure that people use um, a lot. You know, people use cash app now and, and uh, you know, uh, Google pay or, or Apple pay. So. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I'm always excited for PayPal because I think they have that old feeling of, what uh, 
Elon Musk used to be because it, he did run or make PayPal in the end. So like they realize what kind of path that guy's on. So maybe they're trying to emulate and work with, with where the market is going in the future. So that's my feeling on it, but. Um, yeah, it's definitely going to be something to catch out. I'll keep it out for. Yeah. My first article is on today's house hearing. Congress rejects Treasury's proposed stablecoin regime. So the Treasury's push to move stablecoin issuers into a banking regime met with solid resistance from the House Financial Service Committee today. Though other reporting and disclosure requirements are certainly up for discussion, the biggest takeaway was likely prevailing bipartisanship in opposition to major banks which played strongly in favor of the crypto industry today. The U.S. Treasury Department's proposal for new stablecoin law is dead in the water if today's hearing before Congress is any indication. Uh, it's, it's just basically a breakdown of the biggest thing I hope is that stablecoin really depends on what's behind a stablecoin. Industry players generally seek lighter touch regulations and this case is no exception, but alongside the industry's industry, today's hearing illustrated that his skepticism has become a new touchstone of bipartisanship in the House. But my feeling is, I hope that they're hearing what people are saying about fiat and what is going on with it in the banks and the treasury, and they're denying them the ability to take over stable coins, because what have we seen in the past from the treasury or from banks is... Uh, these large rates of inflation and we just can't let, let the same people run uh, what they've been running for years because they aren't doing a very good job of it at all. So, yeah. You're dead on with that. They definitely have it. So uh, you're going to have to see some new things occur. I just, it, it, I feel the exact same way. Like that, you're just spot on with that one. Um, <laughs> to go into my next one, um, just going back over to Coin Telegraph. Uh, so OpenSea, uh, the headline reads, OpenSea once again delists CryptoPunks version one as legal battle heats up. Uh, we reported on this a little bit earlier uh, in what a little bit in the latter part of uh, January, to start of February, uh, we started talking about this V1, V2 uh, thing that was heating up uh, with CryptoPunks and some of the legal issues that was going on. But uh, late on Monday, popular in a, uh, NFT platform, OpenSea once again delisted CryptoPunks version one, which brought her into an existence along uh, along with the iconic CryptoPunks V2 collection due to a smart contract bug. This was allegedly due uh, to a Digital Millennium Copyright Act takedown notice issued by CryptoPunks version two developers at Larva Labs to OpenSea as the company is also the creator of the crypto version one collection. Uh, this move has struck some as strange. Um, so uh, V1 Punks uh, tweeted today says, LL has forced OpenSea, so Larva Labs is LL, uh, to remove crypto version punks because of a DMCA takedown. We are responding via counter notice from our council in the due course uh we look forward to uh updating you further so um to go back into that that whole thing again just in case people missed it um it's the battle for authenticity of the nft collection that uh, begins to heat up uh an announcement posted on the v1 discord developer um villanosa.e alleges that they've spoken with top tier ip attorneys from the u.s who claims that they are lawfully able to carry on in the trade of crypto punks. Meanwhile, the community is preparing a counter notice to OpenSea takedown on top of what that is uh, NFT holders have chosen to rename the collection to crypto version, uh, crypto punks V1 313 WP V1. Uh, partly to reflect the NFT's rap nature uh, for patching up uh, uh, for uh, aforementioned bugs. Um, so this is, uh, this is going to be very interesting. This is not going to be the last we hear of this. Um, as you guys know, there, there was some way that when Larva Labs, the, the first time we reported on the Scott, we were talking about how Larva Labs was able to 
come out with this V2 collection and somehow have the uh, bug in the smart contract that it actually tied their liquidity to the V1. Um, so this was the, 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 the problem that uh, many people that, you know, they were up and roar about. And now they're starting to see this become a legal issue. And and they came out with a V2 collection. And uh, I don't know. We're, I just don't think this would be the last we see of it. Yeah, for sure. No, that makes sense. I don't know. Do you have the feeling this interest, this market with NFTs and stuff is kind of interesting right now as to like what's going on behind the scenes a little bit? Like you hear about this stoppage and then you see that Sotheby's is selling like, I forget if it's 20 or 30 crypto punks at the Sotheby's auction here just in the next little bit. So, I mean, you have conflicting stuff going on at the same time as like talks of money laundering and stuff and i don't know it's it's an interesting time uh on a positive note with bitcoin right now too as well ukraine's ukrainian defense efforts benefit from crypto crowdfunding ukrainian volunteer groups and non-governmental organizations received a record amount of funding via bitcoin donations last year most of these organizations are organized to defend against possible invasion by Russian forces. Bitcoin's donations to Ukraine, such interests were up over 900% in 2021. Uh, Ukraine's defense efforts received a boost of Bitcoin donations in 2021 per a report by blockchain uh, company Elliptic. More than 500,000 worth of Bitcoin was used to crowdfund non-governmental organizations and volunteer groups in 2021. This amount represented a 900% increase in Bitcoin donations over 2020. So that's pretty impressive in one year. And I'm wondering in 2022, what it's looking like with them all over the news or whatever, what, what they're getting for funding when it comes to Bitcoin. I don't know. How do we how do we uh put in a proposal for some of that funding? No doubt, eh? Be interesting. <laughs> Does the government just line their own pockets with it? Because in the end, but is there any accountability behind the Bitcoin too? Ooh, man, I do not know. This is gonna be one interesting thing to see. Um, hey I, Russia, I'm I'll sure. give you two hundred and fifty thousand Bitcoin if you don't come after us. <laughs> I was gonna say, you know, the funny thing about it is that I can see Bitcoin. something like I, I could see the governments, you know, doing uh, what governments do to to kind of, you know, uh, make sure that they they have a a, a piece of it, um, and we're starting to see that. But yeah, I I, I want to fall in line too. Whatever um whatever that application is, we need to fill out to apply for one of those Bitcoin yeah. loans. Uh, just let me know. Do you know what's and, funny uh, is I've been watching the different news is like the Googles and stuff. And I've watched uh, RT News, which is like a Russian news agency. And mm-hmm. they're talking about this buildup of troops along the border and how Macron, has, who's the president of France, has got Russia to agree as soon as their exercise on the border of Belarus is done, that they're going to move all their troops. Like there's no threat to the state of or of ukraine but you hear from the united states side of things it's like they're gonna attack any day it's gonna be like any minute like just wait for it to happen <laughs> the whole time america's over here like we want to get involved <laughs> yeah just let, let us, us flex shoot our, one let us bomb. flex our muscles yeah let us flex our muscles yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right jump into my last article for the day we're gonna jump over to coin speaker uh dot com the headline reads, Ripple's XRP shoots 20% at the SEC's fair notice defense permission. Um, so the cryptocurrency market has posted major gains in the last 24 hours, surging by uh, surging, surging past $2 trillion in valuations. Um, however, the biggest gainer in the top 10 crypto list is Ripple's XRP, registering 20% intraday gains. Uh, as of press time, <clears throat> Ripple's XRP is trading at 88 cents with a market cap of 42.3 billion over the last week. Ripple has registered a staggering 44% gain. Uh, an on chain data provider sentiment reported that XRP gains are also come after a surge in the uh, active addresses its notes. XRP is 
XRP is up 37% in the last four days. And then finally, reacting to his daily active address uptick started in mid-January. Uh, XRP Coin Nation is currently sits tick above 82 cent and is output in the same address as it did in November at 118. Um, so the, uh, the three documents were noticed by Brad Garolina's disposition, SEC formal investigation. Um, and it, it, they went on to say that uh, it would appear near impossible to prove any real correlation between XRP's price and public announcements by partnerships. The SEC must also prove Garland House and Larson sold XRP in the USA. In reality, the SEC's case may be so weak and desperate that it believes uh, the only way it can win is to prove that XRP itself is security per SEC. So the SEC, in essence, is a certain, but in the theory, in this case, they don't think so. So that's why they didn't put the SEC, they just put the SE. Uh, but this is pretty funny. I mean, you, you're starting to see the, uh, the XRP surge start, and we've all talked about, you know, I think we've all, you know, kind of waited on it in this case. Somebody like me, you know, I've talked about XRP for a long time, Scott. Um, and, and it's not like I, it's something that I stand true and, and believe in as far as their policy, but I understand technology, right? And, and as far as the, the power of that technology, uh, that ledger is hyper and it's a hyper ledger and it's, it's so super fast and, and it can handle a lot of transactions and it can do it for a fairly cheap cost. Um, the problem is the reason why they can do this is because of the blockchain is built so tall. You know, the, the higher up you build your blocks, uh, the more centralized they become. So this would be a very uh, great means of use for banks and, and uh, countries in, 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 in terms of using it as a payment system or a banking solution. XRP would be that choice. That would be the ledger uh, just because of the speed and cost. Uh, but I, I think when you talk about decentralized, you have another side to it, right? Um, but you're going to see, I, I think at, at XRP will definitely beat this case in the long run. Um, I think, you know, uh, they have a lot more room to grow because they missed a lot of bull runs. So uh, we'll see how, how this holds up and we'll see how XRP does in the long run. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it's, it's interesting seeing it go up the way it did the last little while. Yeah, I mean, it's been down, though. you know, it, it, it was uh, <clears throat> kind of in May, kind of in May was around 70. Three cent, sixty nine to seventy three cent, and then it surged up to one twenty six to one thirty three, and then it just kind of rejected off of there and came back down, and now it revisited those lows, and now that it's at eighty cent, it sounds appealing, right? But uh, it's definitely it's it's funny to see how it runs, and and I, you know I think you don't you know till it gets back into a price discovery mode, it, it it's still XRP, and we just always got to be cognizant. I think it's an amazing stable though. Yeah. For sure. Well, I'm interested to see where it runs in the next little while. So I can, yeah. it'll be Thanks. kind of fun to see what happens. Um, so my last one is actually, I mean, you were talking about these guys earlier, but uh, Bitfinex hackers arrested 94,000 Bitcoin seized. Uh, the U.S. Just Justice Department has announced the arrest of two individuals for an alleged conspiracy to launder cryptocurrency that was stolen during the 2016 hack of Bitfinex, one of the biggest and oldest crypto exchanges. In a futile effort to ma maintain digital anonymity, the defendants laundered stolen funds through a labyrinth of cryptocurrency transactions. Thanks, thanks to meticulous work of law enforcement, the department once again showed how it can and will follow the money no matter what form it takes, said Deputy Attorney General Lisa O. Monaco. 3.6 million worth of crypto is being seized related to the hack. Ilya Lichtenstein and his wife, Heather Morgan, both of New York, are scheduled to make their initial appearance in federal court today at 3 p.m. in Manhattan. Uh, it's kind of funny. I don't want to put anybody through it, but uh, the wonderful Heather Morgan is uh, loves to think of herself as a little bit of a rapper, but she's also a reporter and uh, they do run companies and stuff. I did a little bit of digging into these people just to see what they're about and and 
they're definitely interesting characters to say the least, but nobody I'd be investing any of my cryptocurrency with. That's for sure. But, no, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah, they're they're definitely uh, they're definitely in that, right? Um, here's my thing, right? Um, I don't know how stories like well, I guess I, I yeah, I don't know how stories like this come out. Uh I, I there's no way that these people are smart enough to uh do the bit for no. this hack and uh not be able to clean the cash uh clean the, the money um or the coins uh in a sense uh to something stable i mean we see it every day um uh, there's a new hack uh there was a polygon hack uh, on their native token today uh there was a there was a hack yesterday of something there's always a hack of something right so these people hack and they can get away with it to the point we're trying to get exchanges to cancel the money. So imagine when somebody steals something from the exchange. These are you're at the hacker's mercy. Um, the other thing was why didn't uh, Bitfinex come back and you know offer us a bounty? If there was a bounty, uh, just reward them in the bounty for the amount that the bounty was to return it, and then return the return the Bitcoin and then burn it and and give it um, give themselves more. Um, I don't know if they'll get more uh, in return, but I guess, you know, that'll be a claim that they will be able to write off, I guess, in a sense, but I'm not sure. I think that's going to be something we have to pay attention to. Yeah, definitely. For sure. And I mean, apparently Bitfinex made it back for the people that sold Bitcoin and gave them some kind of like Leo token or something from what I understand. And like you think about the Leon token versus what Bitcoin is today, <laughs> and it's like, was that really a great Leon? <laughs> prize? And so, what's going to happen with that money? The, the U.S. government has a hold of it. It'll be held in their probably books for at least three years until it's released. And will Bitfinex uh, give it back to the people that lost it originally in the hack or? Or how is this going to play out? It's going to be interesting will in the it, news. And, will the U.S. So hold it for three years and not do anything with and it? And then auction <laughs> it off themselves. <laughs> no. No, I'll trade it for a stable and print stable tokens. It just made them the biggest holder of Bitcoin right now by those those uh, those Bitcoins that they just took over. That's what they're saying. Yeah, one of the biggest for sure. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy 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 <laughs> all right so um that's a wrap on the that you got one more news article that was no, your last that one, was right? my last one okay so we're going to jump over to trading view right now kind of uh, go through our last art uh our last part of our segment um and just kind of go over to trading view get a kind of a look at the total crypto market some of the dominance factors uh that we like to take a look at which is bitcoin and ethereum uh so we're going to jump right into it the total crypto market cap is sitting at 1.9 Five trillion. Uh, we just talked about it a little bit earlier. Have we seen? Have we seen these pumps go up to the two trillion? You're gonna have to have some form of retest. That's just basic uh, FDA, um, and and you know you you're just gonna you're gonna see that naturally. The Bitcoin dominance is at forty two point three two, and the Ethereum dominance is eighteen point eight five. So uh, both of them are are a little bit lower uh, than we've seen over the last uh, two weeks. Uh, we're kind of in that same range, you know. In, in all honesty, between 41 and 30, 43 and, excuse me, and 18 and and uh, and 19. So um, it's good to see, you know, kind of the market staying stabilized and not having a, a big fall. I know some people want in the support um, and, and, and at the, 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 the more local range of Bitcoin, um, but this is not how the market works. The market doesn't work by our our, our uh, analysis it's better just to pick up the trends and watch the trends uh, obviously the entire crypto market is on a downtrend uh, we're trying to watch for anything that can get above a neckline to get us back into more of a consolidation period or an uptrend i think uh people you know don't realize that when we do have these downtrends uh it's not a bad time to, the dollar cost average we talk about it all the time here um, just kind of, you know, it, it or or just stay sideline. If you don't want a dollar cost average, you don't like, you know, somebody that's going to watch something, then uh, you just stay sideline and and you stay, you know, you make, and then you come back when you you, you realize the market is, the trend is reversing. Like it doesn't matter if you catch the bottom or the or uh, you know or pulling the knife out of the dirt. 
uh, it's just making sure that you you're on the right track when it's heading the other way, right? So, um, but without anything else to say about that, I think uh, you know it's a good time to wrap it up. We appreciate you guys tuning in with us as you guys always do. Uh, we're back here again tomorrow, giving you guys more of the daily crypto news. Uh, we also have a Twitter space tomorrow at twelve o'clock p.m., which is five o'clock UTC. Uh, for anybody who wants to join for the M content, uh, I think it's a great time to uh, come in and learn a little bit more about them. They've been on a, a, a we we got familiar with them over the <clears throat> excuse me since uh, August or September, and uh, it's it's a great project. I mean, they they've been working on a lot of things. Uh, it seems like they've been putting some things together and on the back end and starting to bring in some private investors and making some really good deals. So it's always good to hear about uh, projects that continue to build uh, uh, behind the scenes and then bring that real utility to the forefront and not really actually relying on the, the diamond hand retail investors. <laughs> yeah. the, I always think of diamond hands now as like, let's see how much money we can get from you by calling you diamond hands. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more you little diamond hand you yeah yeah hundred times hundred times <laughs> buy all these dips yeah yeah buy them all <laughs> don't <laughs> worry we're creating them but you can buy them back <laughs> price will go up all right guys so we're gonna wrap it up for the day uh tune in with us tomorrow guys uh, until then peace see you guys later peace see you guys later <laughs>